just want to start the, the, like just seeing you in the last few weeks. You just seem very calm, like at peace with yourself, more so than maybe the first two fights. Is that is that fair? Most definitely. You know, I'm very calm. I'm very peaceful. I've always been. You know, um, I'm even more so now than ever. And just ready to go. I think that's the thing. I'm just ready to go. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, when I say you're calm, we obviously still know that bronze bombers waiting there to go um, on Saturday night. Yeah, most definitely. It's going to be a great, great, great show while it lasts. And uh, the preparation for it has been amazing. And my whole team is hyped. Everyone is hyped. We talk to each other at least 10, 10 to 12 times a day, you know, talking about certain situations, sometimes it'd be the same thing because we, we haven't gotten enough of the first conversation. So, you know, um, the way it seems like it's almost over, I think it's eight days away, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, you mentioned your camp. It does seem like a very, very happy camp. And, and Malik in there, obviously your former sparring, sparring partner, what's he brought to you both sort of physically and mentally? I mean, all, overall, he just brings bring his positive energy, he bring bring his love. You know, I've been talking big about love in my camp and it's nothing like it. Those four letter words to have around you at all times, you know. Um a lot of people will say they love you and don't really mean it. And um but when my guys say they love me, I know they really mean it and I mean it when I when I reply back to them. And you know it's nothing that Malik has really taught me. It's just what he could bring out of me that no one else could, you know, in the past. And um, and we're just doing it on a consistent basis, you know. And it's been amazing camps. These This last 17 months has been amazing. You know, all the camps combined together. It's just been amazing. And the more time I've had, um, the better it's been for me. So it's definitely been beneficial for me. Yeah, great. You look like you've just come out of training now, have you? No, it's just getting out the shower. Oh, <laughs> fair enough. Listen, you mentioned love though. Just before we get onto the fight, I just wanted to mention your fir your first daughter uh, born, Naya. Um, for those who don't know, that's kind of the reason you got into boxing in the first place. Just wanted to see how she's doing. Yeah, she's doing she's doing very very well. She's uh sixteen, and uh, she's growing up like any other teenager. She's you know got goals and got dreams of, of becoming some and doing things, you know, in this world, great things in this world. And that's all a father could ever ask. You know, I always tell people that the uh, the most precious gift in the, in the world is being someone's father. Well, as a father, I definitely, I definitely, I definitely agree with that. And yeah, like I say, the story for people who don't know is basically it was like, you know, you know, you're having to do three jobs to try and pay for the health insurance to, to care for her. And, and you just thought, well, you know, I'm going to have to do something here. And it turns out it was the right decision. Yes, most definitely, definitely right. I told her when she was one years old that I'd be able to support her beyond her belief, and boy, did I ever! And uh, I just, God is good, you know. He'll make a way out of no way. Yeah, and it'll be nice to go back to those children again. And say, Daddy's the heavyweight champion again. Definitely, two time in due time, baby. Yeah, I mean, it's this is you know. A trilogy fight, it's its quite a special thing, isn't it, really? I mean, you, you think of the great trilogy, trilogy fights, I suppose Ali Frazier is probably the greatest of them all. Um, doesn't happen that often in boxing. Not at all. You know, um, I think fans of boxing is getting a real treat with this one. Um, I'm always excited. You know, um, every time I, I step out and um, enter into the ring, I'm always a, an exciting show. So, you know, this is a trilogy. and um, like I said, boxing is winning in this in this in this fight, and um, it's going to be a good one. Like I said, it's going to be a good one while it lasts, and and uh, I'm just anxious. I can't wait. I can't wait to go. I'm ready. Um, man, it's been a long, long, it's been a long time coming. We had to go through so many different obstacles, and uh, it's just been an emotional roller coaster. But we're here, and uh, I don't think we we had to deal with it by ourselves. A lot of people in the world had to deal with it, especially with everything else that's been going on in the world that we've had to share together. So this is going to be a real treat, you know. Forget bringing popcorn. Bring pizza and, and milkshakes and hamburgers and hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and and like a couple of weeks ago, it was it was you know they're all saying it's well over in the UK anyway. Fury of AJ, all the belts. It could, could well be Wilder v Usyk for all the belts now. Yeah, most definitely. Um, the Fury AJ talk it was never going to happen. They never had a contract in in to begin with. You know that was all uh, propaganda, and that wasn't nothing I was concerned about because I knew the truth. You know, certain fans and people just take the first thing they hear without doing research, uh, and they just go away with it. You know, and you know people want to be first nowadays instead of being correct and. That was the situation. And um, one thing for sure, when you put a black ink to white paper, it's sealed. You know, it's, it's called a contract. And it's hard to get up out of that. And as long as I knew I had that contract and we was going to activate it, there wasn't no worries and concerns about the talk. It just hyped people up for nothing. And the, 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 the fight I just mentioned, AJ Usyk, were you surprised at that, the outcome? Oh. Wasn't at all, you know. I wasn't at all. Um, Malik always talk about Usyk and how skillful he is, and and different things, especially in uh, coming from a cruiserweight. Um, he he de- he did he you know styles make fights, and he definitely have his his struggles. Um, we've seen that in the heavyweight division where he had his struggles with Chaz with a spoon. He had his struggles with Derek Chisora, you know, and um, you know, but styles make fights and. And um, with Joshua, um, he just had his number at that point in time. And and I think he's going to have his number even more so the second time around. And like he said, he's going to be faster. I think he's going to be a little bit faster as well. You know, so, well, who knows? It's boxing at the end of the day. We really don't know until it's it, it, time for things to happen. No, exactly. Um, they, they asked Tyson Fury about that fight as well. And he, sa- he said that, you're the most dangerous heavyweight out there. You beat both of them. And the only man you can't beat, obviously, he's going to say is him. Well, you know, I've already knocked him out once before. I'm sure he replaced that in his head over and over again. You know, that's why he's so brave to say that I'm the most dangerous man in the world and different things like that. Because I am. It's true facts. You know, my famous my famous quote is, guys have to be perfect for 12 rounds with me. I don't have to be perfect for two seconds. And then it's bam, baby, good night. And uh, when you have devastating power, God given, you know you're always gonna be the you're always gonna be the leader of the pack. You know, uh, we've seen many guys. Some people say skills, 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 but that's just a broken record because uh, we've seen many guys with skills and uh, they still lost. Um, um, but you know, when when you have power, you're never out of a fight ever. You know, you can always have somebody that got more skills that can outskill you. And from a first to a 12 round fight. But when it boils down to it, it's all about who has the more, who, when you have power, now, you know, we'll see who, we, you know, it's a difference between uh, when you're having so much power and the other one doesn't. It can get you out of many different things, you know, as, as, as people have seen in my career many a times. So, you know, you, you have the easy, it damage you do, damage you don't at the end of the day. And it's all about how you use certain things. And uh, and uh, but this point in time in this fight, people are going to see a lot of different things. I can't please everyone, and I'm not trying to. I never have, and I never will. You know, there's too many people in the world. There's millions of people in the world, and I can't please everyone. You show them everything, they're still going to find some type of some type of reason to to to, to de- degrade you and uh, drag your name in the dirt. You know, you can't please people, especially those that would never ever get in this sport or never get in the ring, period. You know, it's negative 0.0001% of people in the whole entire world that are stepping in this ring, you know, and I, how dare them have the, the, the audacity to talk about <laughs> what you can and cannot do or what you should or shouldn't do when they are never stepping this, in this position. You know, even with all my failures, a lot of them would never be able to accomplish it. So... Yeah, I mean that's a that's a that's a very fa- valid point. The armchair critics, or the keyboard warriors, whatever you want to call them. But yeah, I just wanted you mentioned uh, that second fight, and you, we're going to see changes. Um, I know I'm not going to go into all the, you know, obviously I know you didn't want it to end when it ended. But have you, a first of all, when was the first time you were able to look back at that fight, and 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 have you learned stuff from that? Are you going to do stuff differently? 
Mm, I haven't really, um, I've just seen different clips and stuff like that. And it, it's kind of hard to look at to see the circumstances that I was under. You know, when you know the truth, you know the truth. That's why I've been so calm and collective throughout this whole process. Because, you know, they say the truth has set you free. And it's a true statement. You know, we know the facts. We know the truth. And, uh, but, you know, when I do look at it, if I see clips or whatever, like I always tell my team, I like I could have been, you know, when the mask came off me, I could have called it. I could, when I didn't feel right, when Chris took the mask off me, when you see my eyes looking crazy and looking like a zombie, you know, people have watched me over five years. They know how I act. They know how I look. <laughs> and uh, that tells it all right there. You know, people know what their eyes have seen, no matter what they want to, you know, put in their heads, but they know what the eyes have seen. And, you know, it's fine with me. You know, I can live with the truth. You know, I'm one of the realists in the business. And uh, I can live with the truth and I can accept the truth and move. And that's why I have moved forward. Allow me to make myself even better. You know, I'm actually glad that it happened to me the way it happened to me. You know, um, it sh I showed that I was a true warrior. Even the circumstances that I was under, I still went along with. And I know who I am, but I want to see what type of man, what type of warrior would I be? He showed me his best and he still can even on my worst night, on his best night, he still couldn't get me out of there, you know? So, uh, uh, people would try to label it as a knockout, but that's not a knockout. No, that's a stoppage because of a weak individual in my team that did something he was supposed to do, and that's throw it in the towel. I ended the fight on my feet. It's a difference between a knockout and someone ending it on their feet, you know? And uh, I'm just looking forward to, to this time around and I can't wait again. Yeah, I mean, you've just obviously explained how you felt, but for you know, for you can imagine people over here are saying, "Well, what's the point of watching that fight?" You know, Tyson beat in the last time fair and square. What's what's Deontay going to do? So, what do you say to those people? Hey, stay tuned. You're watching. You watch then, and you're going to watch now. So, you'll see exactly what I'm going to do come October the ninth. Okay, um, I won't keep you. I know you. You know you wait to do your things. You just got out of the shower, so just a couple more. Um, yeah. So you said, however long the fight lasts. Uh, from what I gather from that, that you don't think it's going to go the distance, or you know it's not going to go the distance. It's not going to go the distance at, at all. I can't see this fight going the distance. Um, look, at the end of the day, we want it way more than him, and I know for facts he hasn't trained this. He hasn't trained as hard as I've trained. He don't want it as bad as I want it, as I want it. And for that reason, I cannot see this fight going long distance. Um, this is the heavyweight division. And when people come out to watch the heavyweight division, they come to see knockouts. And they know when they come to see Deontay Wilder, they're going to get just that, you know. And, uh, and I'm going to deliver. Uh, again, I can't wait.